Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post watershed production. Good evening and welcome to an uneven late night large riddled with potholes. I am your M25 circular at rush hour, and next to me is your spaghetti junction, Mike Large. Good evening, all. How are we? I hope you're all well and have been enjoying your bank holiday, as this will go out just after the final proper bank holiday of the year, the August bank holiday, which of course was met with torrential downpours, I think. Pretty standard, really, for this country, I'd say. <laughs> for this country. So, Mike, why don't you uh, tell our listeners a little bit about tonight's theme? Tonight's theme is uh, is growing. <laughs> no, Mike, that's your personal theme. What's late night? I'll be right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, tonight tonight we're talking about roads, aren't we? We are. We are. Yeah, and what? growing. Well, I'm sure that will come into it. Oh, it always comes into it. <laughs> so. Growth. What what do you um might give? What do you, what do you, what's the first thing you think of when I say road? Do you? How would you describe it to say your little brother if he didn't know what a road was, which I'm sure he does. Oh, I bloody hope he does. He's eight. You know I mean? <laughs> How would I describe a road to my little brother? I'd describe it as something that people use to travel from A to B. Okay. Or travel on from A to B. Tarmac. Like how else do you describe a road? Go on, describe okay. a road better than that. <laughs> it's uh, something that's carved into the into the earth, like you say, to make mean make transport easier. Easier well, between one to, anyway. point and another. Mr. Wikipedia describes it as a thoroughfare route or way on land between two places, which typically has been paved or otherwise improved to allow travel by some conveyance, including horse and car <laughs> or a motor vehicle, and obviously things like bicycles and that as well electric wheelchairs I don't know roads consist of one or sometimes two roadways or carriageways <clears throat> each with one or more lanes and obviously pavements uh, in certain areas and verges so roads are obviously generally referred to as public roads or highways indeed are you familiar at all with how roads came about originally I mean I know I know there's the classic question of what did the Romans ever do for us it was roads, straight roads, A to B. Well, all roads, all roads did lead to Rome. True story. I believe it probably was the Romans. Uh, any historians can uh, please correct me. But no, I'll confirm that for you. I believe it was Romans. the Romans that, when they uh, when they were obviously commandeering our country, they uh, they built many many roads as well as probably aqueducts and all kinds of other useful things. Mm-hmm. Fair play to them. Hmm. So, Mike, I uh, thought we'd for that anyway. <laughs> for that. Rather than conquering us, Mike, why don't we? We're going to go. We're going to try and go through a brief history of roads to kind of get us up to scratch. Just in case, people, yeah. Yeah, it's what we usually do. Let's face it. You know, we live in an information age, but you still, you know, you can't go from no information to automatically knowing exactly how everything came about. You need context. So, for instance, how's a kid, or an or an adolescent, or even a an adult who's quite sheltered how how are they to know how a planet which was once either green, blue or desert how how did that get all these kind of winding tarmac areas across it how how did we get to that stage tell us how well, I'm going to look to Wikipedia again (laughs) our sponsor our sponsor (coughs) The assertion that the first pathways were, mo- were trails made by animals has not been universally accepted. <laughs> I wonder why. Because, of course, the the original the original way of getting from one route to another, obviously, you'd have to you have to cut your own trail, wouldn't you? For oh, instance, there'd be o- yeah. there'd be over uh, overgrowing plant life and all kinds of things. Or follow where a large animal had walked through the bushes. Yeah, and, and crushed and and okay. pushed stuff out of the way. Yeah, exactly. Apparently, obviously that that's how I imagine that's how most 
trails originally started was like you say either a large animal or using sticks or whatever to clear stuff out of the way to make you make yourself a path convenient path from one site to the next obviously we moved on from there I'm sure there was probably a connecting point between having just a path and then beginning to put things like rocks down to stop plants from overgrowing and then making it smooth rocks cobbles paving that seems like the natural progression you would have thought so the world's oldest known paved road was apparently laid in Egypt as long ago as potentially 2600 BC that's quite a little while ago (laughs) (laughs) Uh, there are stone paved streets in the in the city of Ur in the Middle East wherever that is apparently dating back to 4000 BC oh yeah wow so although they're not technically roads they have exactly the same design behind them uh, there are corduroy roads which apparently are log roads in good old Glastonbury here again dating to 4000 BC we the timber trackway sweet track causeway in England is one of the oldest engineered roads discovered and the oldest timber trackway discovered in northern Europe and again that's getting close to 4000 BC here we go from about 312 BC the Roman Empire built straight strong stone Roman roads throughout Europe and North Africa which is obviously where our legacy comes from indeed at its peak the Roman Empire was connected by 29 major roads moving out from Rome and covering 78,000 kilometres which is 52,964 Roman miles of paved roads. It's quite a lot of road, really. Mike, I don't know if you're more familiar with the Roman Empire than me. Go on. Did, 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 the, Romans, did the Romans get the slaves of the countries they'd conquered to build these things? Wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Well, <laughs> that's why I'm asking. I can imagine they, uh, I can imagine they did. Um, like... Which Obviously they came up with the ideas and things and <laughs> yeah, brought yeah. stuff, ideas across Europe one way or another, but you don't have a dog and bark yourself, do you? <laughs> yes, Mike. Uh, again, this is not a promotion uh, or advocation of slavery, but <laughs> the, the Roman roads, the pyramids of Egypt, <laughs> you can't argue with those results. <laughs> True story. In the 8th century AD, many roads were built throughout the Arab Empire this was when uh, Arabia was a flourishing place where lots of new and exciting discoveries and technologies were uh, invented and, and progressing and all kinds of schools of thought oh. rather than the backward religious dogma that it's currently associated with. The most sophisticated roads were in Baghdad, which were paved with tar. Tar was devi- derived obviously from petroleum, accessed from oil fields in the region. So, they okay. they they knew exactly what they were sat on when they started along those roads. All that time ago. Anyway, so if we're talking specifically about Britain, the UK, I think we probably started with the pathways. Mm. Maybe the, the, and co- then, and the then cobbles. Like, we can walk on this, but how can we get our cart over that? Exactly. And then obviously the Romans showed us the way. Wider. Yeah. Yeah, the Romans showed us the way. And um, basically, the reason that roads started flourishing and getting better and better was basically free trade. The idea was, you know, traders needed to move their goods and and what have you further and faster. So, you know, the roads were improved. I believe there there was a bit of a problem. Obviously, this didn't go particularly smoothly because obviously the kingdom, what have you, was trying to control which roads were built when they had to pay for them. Thus, most of them became toll roads, and obviously the peasants and, and all kinds of other people, forest people and what have you, weren't particularly happy because, you know, basically you're charging people to go along a route that they've gone through their whole lives. Mm. All of a sudden there's a gate across it. Oh, sorry, that's going to be, you know, I don't know, three gold pieces now. They kicked up a hell of a fuss. Wouldn't you? Yeah. I no, I, I completely agree. I'd throw some lesson rights. <laughs> I'm sure you would. Bus stop doesn't try, won't you? Yeah, it doesn't try. Or build your own road. That's just damn straight up. <laughs> I built my own better road. 
parallel yeah, right, to ne- it. right next door to it. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. The problem with these early roads, amongst other things, other than the, uh, the pretty flimsy gates on either side, one of the big problems was the fact that they were obviously cutting through forests and other areas like that. Can you think of any major problem associated with running roads through forests or other areas like that? Robin Hood gonna fuck you up. <laughs> Close. Get your stinking rat out! It's late night large. The big problem with uh, roads that cut through woodland and other unguarded areas was highwaymen. Hmm. Growers. <laughs> like, what's your what's your personal opinion of highwaymen? Other than them being dashing rogues. Obviously, that was exactly what I was about to say. You stole the words out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, what's my opinion of them? You know, fair play in it, fair game. <laughs> <laughs> Robin pillaging, you know, it's all fair. You know, maybe the old person gets hurt a bit, but you know. Do you think? Do you think they you were? Almost there, so you take it. Do you think they were like land pirates? Yeah, they're quite similar. That's they not a bad way to describe them. They were, they were quite similar, weren't they? I mean, they they arrived on horseback. They were usually extravagantly dressed, like big characters, big uh, catchphrases. Obviously, the money or your life kind of yeah. things that they'd they'd call out. Obviously, they they got mythologised a little bit because you know you had like the penny dreadfuls and everything they made them out to be dangerous characters but also quite honourable they weren't dirty criminals who would just like slaughter people and, and steal their things it would be very much kind of a holding the gun to them and uh, ordering them to to uh, hand over the goods and then they'd ride away with, without harming anyone if they could so whether you know whether that's fair or not I don't know obviously the punishment for being a highwayman was the gallows so it was pretty dangerous uh, vocation dangerous if you work, chose yeah. it yeah the penalty for robbery with violence was hanging yeah and highwaymen often laid in wait on the main roads radiating from London which makes sense it, it does makes complete sense because obviously most of the traders would be going to and from there they usually chose lonely and isolated areas of heathland or woodland and one of the favourite spots for uh, highwaymen to to lay and wait I guess was Hounslow Heath so there you go that's what it's famous for or what it's most famous for or was it Shooter's Hill on the Great Dover Road is also quite notorious for being a hot spot for highwaymen also the uh, the road from Banbury to Oxford <laughs> are you being serious? <laughs> yeah seriously yeah sometimes if I you know run out of money at the end of the month or something I'll just pull over a car and just you know your money or your life <laughs> okay. It's well, so fun. <laughs> well, no, highwaymen hi- were pretty cool. They operated, I believe, from pretty much the end of the 16th century to the beginning of the 18th century, which oh, is quite a long period. You say you say highwaymen like, were pretty cool. I mean, for instance, if but, I was around then, I think I I would have quite liked to be one. Mm, yeah, uh, but this, yeah, highwaymen were pretty cool I don't know something about that alright say it was still happening today <laughs> say there were still highwaymen now it's, it's in and it was as popular as it ever was well obviously would you, would pro- you progression and progression and, uh, in many areas made that impossible Euf- other euphemisms for highwaymen were knights of the road and gentlemen of the road see I mean gentlemen of the road I think is a little bit soft I think that's probably doing them a little bit too much credit. They were bandits after all. Knights, what knights of the roads? Right. <laughs> yeah, but knights were knights were assholes. I mean, they, you know, I know they're obviously mythologised to be these uh, wonderful people, but you had to be an asshole to be. Like, you had to be ready to run anyone through. For king and country. Yeah, it? well, for king and country, it doesn't matter about right and wrong. It's does the king want you to do it? Anyway. Oh, of course, because. Yeah, but a highwayman, no, they were cool. Don't worry, yeah. about, don't worry about right and wrong. <laughs> no, yeah. What I'm saying is highwaymen were better than knights. <laughs> right. Yeah, because high, highwaymen didn't follow the crown. You know, they weren't... Mate, I, I'm, I'm of the mind, okay... No, they just fuck people up for greed. No, listen, li- no, 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 hear me out, okay? Because I know it does sound really stupid if I say something like... Oh, highwaymen are much cooler than knights. No, the, the immediate right. impression is being a robber is much, much cooler, obviously, than you know be, being in, in, say, in the army serving your country. Yeah, you're right. 
Well done, Aaron. Thank you for that wonderful insight. Oh, into I your see mind the. Well, I see you what work. you did there. I see what you did there. You tried to. You tried to compare. That's Aaron Bliss for you, people. All right. Shut up. We're not comparing it to modern day because it's slightly different. But back then, okay, hear me out. Concepts the same. No, 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 it's not. Okay. Listen to me. The reason that cool. I say that a homeman is cooler and possibly even more virtuous than a knight is this: he does not, he does not blindly follow the crown. For instance, a knight operating under a corrupt king, you know, could be given free reign to just slaughter peasants, and not only would he do it blindly, he'd be lavishly rewarded for it. Yeah, you see where I'm going? So his motivation for doing it is to be lavishly rewarded and to be able to, like, kill all those people with impunity. Whereas a highwayman, you know, he's a, he's a loose cannon, he's a rogue, he, he's doing it for his own self-enrichment, of course, but, you know, like they say, he's, he, they were quite honourable generally. They they wouldn't execute people for no reason. They they just, you know, hand over the money and we'll leave you alone. And they weren't tied to any particular... You know, they weren't tied to a corrupt leader of any kind. They they did it, you know, they they weren't they wouldn't bullshit about it. You know, they did it for their own self enrichment. They probably did it for the excitement as well. And they did it under threat of the gallows. Now, do you see what I'm saying? Whereas the knight basically is able to slaughter with impunity and they know there's no threat of the gallows at all. In fact, there's no threat of m- much of anything because if you're a knight, you're coated in like the best armour, you have the best weaponry. You're like pretty invincible. So personally, I have a lot more respect for uh, home and the knights. Bringing it up to date is completely wrong, Mike, because you, you can't compare them. Even though, obviously, I can understand the comparison between a corrupt king and how corrupt our government is, but that's slightly yeah. different. Oh, OK, it's different because you... As, mu- as corrupt as our government is, they can only indirectly kill people. They can't, they can't order the police and military to just slaughter hundreds of people, even if they'd like to. No. Can. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. You're wrong in that, but that's oh, cool. shut up. No, don't worry about. It. I mean, generalising as well. Really. Are you saying no highwayman ever killed anyone? No, no, no. I was general. Are you also I said saying, I was. General- are you also saying that every single night was a complete asshole? No, you know, I no, one, no one did it for pride of their country. No one. No one who was a knight was a, a no, good I admit, person. I admit, no, no, I admitted that I was generalising. Obviously, you can't speak for every single person who ever What are you operated. basing your opinions on? Basing my opinions? Well, basing my opinions on the fact that most monarchs were corrupt. That's basically what I was basing doesn't on. doesn't mean most knights were corrupt. No, but the motives, if you look at the motives, as in the rewards versus the potential punishment, I said I admire Hiram more because... Although the rewards might be high, there's no guarantees. Whereas the punishment would be horrendous. You know, you'd basically be, you'd be executed. With a knight, the rewards are guaranteed to be high, and you can kill with impunity, knowing there's no punishment. So being a mass murderer today, right? Because obviously the the penalty would be huge. You know, and you, you know you're doing it because you no one wants you to do it, but you're doing it because you want to. That that is so much cooler than say no, being no. a policeman who, all right, who enforces say a corrupt government's <laughs> um, rules and, and regulations. Yeah, no, oh, I do, okay. I do, I, being I, a mass murderer. No, I did. Gr- I'd agree to a certain extent. As controversial as that is, if you're if you're a police officer in, a, in an eminently corrupt country and you're willingly carrying out the corrupt orders of a government that you know is oppressing its people. In many ways, you're just as bad as someone who mass murders people, because at least they're honest and they know that they're going to receive their punishment. Mm. But no, it is generalised, and I'd agree with that. Anyway, I'd have uh, probably been a knight if I was around in that kind of. Toys. You wish. Anyway, hi- highwaymen, right? They they basically died out, metaphorically and probably really, <laughs> the beginning of the 18th century. What were the two major reasons, Mike? That hi- Highwaymen ceased to be as a as a threat on the roads. Uh, growing, and also, basically, I was pretty pissed off, so I just said sent a message around. Was like, look, you you ought to don't stop this shit. Then uh, I'm probably going to have to. Going to be some trouble, is it? Yeah, I'm probably going to have to come and kick your asses. So uh, eventually, when you know word spread, they uh, they stopped doing it through fear of me kicking their ass. So. Thanks for that, Mike. That's that's really good to know. 
No, it's alright, any time. Uh, encyclopedia of knowledge, me. Don't worry about it. Okay, right. Also, yeah. since I was there and part of it, I can accurately tell you exactly what happened. So there you go. <laughs> Genius. I should just say that the actual reason for the demise of Highwaymen was both the advent of the railways and the introduction of man turnpikes, which basically is toll roads where there were gates at certain points in the road where people would man them to collect the money. And obviously, if there are people watching the road, then highwaymen are much less likely to get away uh, undiscovered and unjudged. So there we go. Railways and uh, turnpikes were the demise of the highwaymen. Obviously, when we move beyond that, the big point uh, of moving beyond the highwayman period, as well as the turnpikes and the railways, was Mike growing cars, moving on from the horse and carriage, motorized vehicles. Having said that, like, yes, ob obviously it make difficult, but you can you imagine the first kind of cars. Yeah. And how slow they went mm. and stuff. I mean, it wouldn't have been that m difficult to hold up someone in a car. Well, yeah, horses probably would have kept up with them comfortably, yeah. I agree. Do you know what I mean? You're not. Because you're inside a car, it doesn't mean you're safe. Yeah, but remember, you'd, have to, you'd still have to stop the vehicle. The horse isn't going to scare a car. No, but it'll scare the person driving it. Unless the person knew it was a highwayman, in which case they just plough on. And then you just hit the Would horse you? and knock it, knock him away, wouldn't you? Would I you? don't know. I think you're. Uh, oh, hang on. Did the uh, did the early cars have roofs? I don't know. I'm not even sure they did. This is my point. Uh, anyway, what we're what we're trying to say also is it could be melted into triviality because most of the early motorized vehicles obviously were owned by the aristocracy and people like that. You know, regular peasants couldn't afford cars anyway, motorized vehicles. So they yeah. would have been few and far between when they. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, what's growing on? Now, I don't know if you're aware, but the first motorized vehicles caused a big problem for roads. Because obviously roads were not built to the same standards as today. And there were a number of issues of the wheel ruts, basically causing horrible damage to the roads. And even when improvements were made to the designs of motorised vehicles, i.e. The, the, the wheel girth was increased pretty considerably, still damaged the road pretty badly. It's because the roads were built first. The roads weren't yeah, built of course. to accommodate for cars. No. They were hoping they would, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. So we had to go back to the drawing board, especially with the knowledge that motorised vehicles would eventually become more affordable to more people. Indeed. So, the next step, obviously, was to redesign roads. Nowadays, uh, road construction obviously requires the creation of a continuous right-of-way, which overcomes geographic obstacles and has grades low enough to permit vehicle or foot travel. So says Wikipedia, anyway. The process of building a road is often begun with the removal of earth and rock by digging or blasting, construction of embankments, bridges and tunnels, and potentially deforestation, uh, and then the laying of pavement material. You and me, I'm sure we've seen roads in the, in the process of being built. We have. You need to consider other things, obviously, including drainage, you know, flooding issues. You have to, obviously, incorporate a hard shoulder or whatever, if need be, or lay -bys. Yeah, depending on, obviously, the, the road. Yeah. Now, Mike, I don't know if you've seen... Uh, here we are. I'll show you this. What I'm showing Mike right now is a picture... Honestly, it's a US picture. It's a cross-section of how a road's built. Now, if you see there, I think there are six different layers of materials that are used to build a road. Hmm. Which you wouldn't think. Most people wouldn't think that when they're driving across a road. You might think two or three, two or three layers. But apparently... No, there's as many as six layers with a really pounded bottom aggregate base and then above that are layers and layers of uh, fragments of rock mixed obviously with tarmac and what have you. So, so there's th three you your base. following three layers of base, yeah. Then an intermediate level where the fragments of rock are pounded closer together. And then finally, the surface and superpave, which again, fragments are really 
grinded close together and obviously coated with nice smooth tarmac on top to allow tyre treads to go across without too much disruption to your journey and obviously not too much damage to the tyres either but yeah did you did you know that there's as many as six layers in in the average in the average road I mean I'm sure that'll probably be quite similar in this country I know it's US but yeah no I didn't know it was six but I yeah when these roads were approved on the uh, it was the advent of motorised vehicles and obviously they started to become more well there was a prol- proliferation amongst the denizenry even the lower peasants could start buying motor vehicles if we're talking about the 19th century and what have you mm-hmm. well especially maybe the 20th century more yeah. than the 19th yeah but Roads obviously started to crop up, connecting as much of the country as possible. Now, in this country, we generally have, I think, four major types of roads that I can think of, right? There's A roads. There's B roads. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was trying to give a brief definition of them as well. An A road's considered a major route. It's an artery, kind of. A for artery. It's an artery of the country. It's a major route which actually can at sometimes be upgraded to a motorway status but generally it's it's known as a very heavily used main road yeah. so, so it will cut through towns, cities through the centre of them and, and that kind of thing so most things people consider a main road would be an A road you would th- yeah normally and it, they're the roads that obviously uh, have have the most road markings road signs you know so you always know where you're going probably and uh, being the most common no, I wouldn't I don't know about that I would have said that B roads are probably a bit more common. Because or more used. Yeah, more used. Yeah, I agree with that. B roads are probably more common. Yeah, because B roads loads are... Loads of B roads. B roads, roads yeah. are, are not considered essential roads. They don't connect massive town cities and, and get you from one end of the country to the other. But they're the roundabout roads. They're the roads that go slightly different routes, off the beaten track maybe a little bit, but lighter roads they're narrow roads they're, they're roads that aren't used quite as much but a lot of them you might be a bit kind of thinking maybe these could be main roads some of them probably resemble main roads but they're, 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 routes, yeah. they're routes they're not considered essential they're more like backup roads roads that kind of get you to places that aren't economic hubs or what have you but you know place where you live particularly yeah of course what I would maybe call sea roads uh, which don't exist but C roads I would, would consider I, I would say C for country I think C is c- country lanes not just country lanes but anything that resembles country lanes what I'm talking about generally is unmarked roads single track roads single track roads roads around the back end of nowhere roads that don't really connect you to anything other than houses and countryside and farms maybe yeah Rural roads. Rural roads. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, you probably do get another category, which is D roads, D for dirt track. <laughs> yeah. Which aren't really roads at all. They're just kind of pathways. They might have a bit of gravel to prevent your car from getting stuck in the swamp should it rain. But yeah, that's another story. So we've got officially A roads, B roads, and we've just made up <laughs> definitions for C roads and D roads, which which is just other types. Now, of course, Mike, You're which thinking- one are we missing? Well, you're, you're obviously forgetting the the biggest, most prominent the, road. The daddy. The motorways. Uh, good old motorways. Well, dual carriageways and motorways. Yeah, dual carriageways I'd probably class with A roads, but... Yeah, yeah they're where they are. And, and motorways, though. Mike, what can you tell us about motorways? They're extremely uh, fun to travel on. When there's like <laughs> loads of traffic and congestion, they're really fun to sit on for hours on end, moving about three metres. Yeah, they can be a bit of a nightmare, can't they? R- motorways are even are, are either they obviously motorways were designed originally to ma- to fill people with glee because they got on a motorway and you think, oh my god, we're going to get to this major city, you know, an hour faster than if we were just using A and B roads. The problem is, as everything is generally caused by too many people, too many vehicles. Now we've got to the stage where motorways ironically can sometimes take even longer to travel on than on an A or B road mainly because everyone's decided to use the motorway at the same time and the A and B roads are pretty clear well there you go I'm sure that wasn't what was intended when they were uh... no they're, e- they're either loved or hated their original purpose was quite noble 
take a heavy volume of traffic off the A and B roads. Now all anyone does is bitch about them. <sighs> yeah, I mean, if you're, if don't get me wrong, motorways are fantastic late at night when it's mm. pretty clear. But Jesus Christ, and we're not just talking about tailbacks, gridlock. Do you know what else we're talking about? Horrible, horrible car accidents. Yeah. You get the absolute worst on the motorway. Nasty shit. I really feel sorry for people who have to pick through that kind of wreckage. You can you can obviously uh, figure it out when cars are colliding at like 100 mile an hour. There's going to be some serious damage to everyone. Now, Mike, an interesting thing we found, obviously, we found a page of motorway statistics because, we of did. course, of course, we're going through this chronologically and motorways are basically the last piece in the road jigsaw. Yeah. And the first UK motorway was opened in 1958, or sorry, section of the motorway, because obviously motorways are built in sections. Hmm. It began in 1958. We've got a chart in front of us. We have. Well, what, what did you think when you saw this? Um, like, how, which motorways were opened in what year and how prolific we were, were at certain, in certain years? Well, the listeners can't see the other page we were looking at, but uh, the chart just confirms what we saw on there, really. There was a massive... Uh, boom if you like over a period of say maybe 15 to 20 years where a substantial amount of the motorways or motorway sections were built and yeah. it's petered off we're looking at i mean we're looking particularly Se at 1971 70, i think that's 71 is that 71 i think it's 1971 mm. in 1971 there were nearly 250 miles worth of motorway built that's in a single year yeah, which and if you compare that to, I think it goes up to two thousand three there, where mm. there was twenty five. We uh, it's it's incredible to see because two thousand and two there was none. Two thousand one yeah. none. We, what yeah, what we discovered most of all was uh, obviously there was a, there was peak building between the mid sixties, which tailed off. At the beginning of the eighties, when you know who was in charge, mm, little Your best mate, little bits and pieces beginning of the 90s but the worst decade for motorway building or motorway expansion has been the last decade yeah. there's been there's been only four incidents of motorway expansion in in the last 10 years yeah well between it's 2000 and 2010 yeah I mean, there were some years even not going that far back in you know in the, in the 90s where there was more activity in a, a period of a year or maybe two years uh, say 95, 96 than there has been since the turn of the century it's pretty incredible do you not... think it has anything to do with I'm going to throw this out there do you think this is a, one of the big reasons why our economy is so stagnant that public infrastructure spending just isn't there are we spending enough on our roads I remember reading somewhere that we're way behind most of Europe in the state of our roads we probably are there was always going to be a, a point where it was going to decrease the amount of obviously. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, let's, let's we're never going to keep building like roads well, let's at be, the same. Let's be clear. I mean, when, between you know the when it started and the peak between the mid sixties and the end of the seventies, that was clearly because there weren't any motorways before that started. Exactly, yeah, it was always going to slow down dramatically. Of course, but, but I, it, is, it, you've got to ask yourself: Is there still need? For, for spending in this area, um, and I'm not I'm not necessarily talking about improving. The, I'm not necessarily talking about new not. motorways. I just mean like maybe expansion of existing motorways and improvements. Yeah, mm. is is there is there need for that now? I think so. Well, you know, the other thing is the other thing that people say that needs to be improved and way behind the times and most of Europe. Well, sorry, most of Europe. Okay, most of developed Europe, I'm not talking about Eastern Europe, uh, is our railways as well. Another example, you don't you don't put the public money in, it doesn't get improved. Why, why would a private enterprise spend most of their capital on improving something that is kind of okay already? Do you know what I mean? It, it wouldn't benefit them to do no, so. No, exactly. You, you don't want to spend your own capital. It, it has to be public money. <laughs> You've got to renationalise the railways, quite frankly and get spending on some infrastructure and obviously we've come a long way from roads that were not fit for purpose we come a long way from roads which the only way they could be guided against highway money was to have people pay, you know pay for them toll roads 
are toll roads the way forward? Because I know congestion charges, I think, have been universally accepted as probably a good idea. I don't think people would necessarily accept toll roads as a good I idea. I, 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 I really don't like the idea of, of toll roads. People, again, would argue we we have a fairly large tax burden in this country. Surely taxes should be paying for things like this. Yeah. You know, maybe if we were we, we were giving less tax away to big businesses and, and whatever, we could spend them on, like, public need, things that the whole general public uses, i.e. roads, which is one of our most important. Yeah, I, I don't think you can build something using public money and then charge the public to use it. Oh, exactly. That, 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 that would be like you giving me 40 quid to go and buy an Xbox game for you so you were ill or something I don't know I mean, 40 quid I really want this Xbox game can I you know can you go get it for me yeah I'll go get it and then me going and using your money to buy it and then when I've got it saying actually Aaron I'm gonna I'm gonna charge you £2 a night if you wanna <laughs> if you wanna play that game <laughs> that's effectively what they're doing well I mean their argument would be uh, we need money to maintain it but like I say that that's the what, tax that's what the tax revenue is for surely yeah, like I don't under- and if it's if that's the case, how clever are you building something that you can't afford to maintain? Again, though, that's politics, isn't it? Some parties claim we can't afford it. Other parties, is there enough money? Yeah, you know, every country runs on a deficit. I, yeah, but yeah, there's there's enough money there. Just is it in the right places? I think that exactly. I think that's I think that's something the right and left wing can agree on anyway. It, it's not it's not necessarily tax levels is what the tax is used for agreed so anything else to add about roads Mike now that we've hurtled up to the present day and are heading for a horrible horrible crash <laughs> uh, uh, no I don't think so I think we've I think we've covered roads nicely yeah obviously we've forgotten some of the characters the colourful characters the prostitutes the pimps the, oh, hi- yeah. the hitchhikers the uh, the people who deliberately go in front of your car to get conversation People who crash into your car deliberately to just for the shits and giggles. People who write off their cars all the time, Kevin. The puffing of the month every month. We need more spending on public roads. Anyway, we're going to go out for tonight. So it's good night from me. And it's uh, good night from me.